We're going to continue our discussions on um, finance and we're going to talk about uh, investments. So the, f the uh, chapter or the concept after economics deals with understanding investments. As you can see uh, from the agenda, we're going to ta try to define the term investments. Then we're going to look at risk and return as the two critical components of all decisions uh, investment related. Uh, then we're also going to go over the two-step investment decision process and some of the key factors that affect investments and their decisions. So first off, let's look at the word investments. Investments, as we know, it has been informally defined by many people or at least uh, by this age you have an understanding of what an investment would be. Uh, of course, it's something that you, you know, where you put your money up front and you hope to gain from that uh, investment or that initial uh, money that you put up. So uh, investments formally is the study of the process of committing funds, which is putting money in uh, or at, the, at, the, at the beginning, to one or more assets. So you have to buy something or you have to invest in something. Emphasis is on holding the financial assets and marketable securities. The term marketable securities simply means investments of different kinds. It can mean stocks, it can mean bonds, it can mean mutual funds, uh, it can mean um, a, a REIT, which is real estate uh, investment trust units. So there are lots of things that, that it can mean. We will go over all those terms and how they are different from each other. Um, these concepts also apply to real assets, which mean uh, real estate assets, so buildings, land, uh, equipment, and foreign financial assets uh, also are part of this. So for example, currencies and uh, other foreign assets that you may invest in. Uh, investment objectives is the, is the next uh, section of this presentation. So why do people invest? People invest for various reasons, including these five. These are what we call primary and secondary objectives. The first three are obviously primary, as you can tell, and they are the most obvious reasons for investments, and they are also extremely critical for investment. So the first one is to uh, make sure that your money is safe, safety of capital. So capital means money or funds, so that at least it, it is safe. It is safely put somewhere, and it r retains its value. Uh, so, as you know, inflation, in an inflationary environment, uh, you, you know that the value of money decreases. So safety of capital would mean that, first of all, it's safe from, um, you know, getting stolen, so you don't have it kept in your house, um, and then you, it's somewhere, you know, for example, a bank or some kind of investment firm, so it is safe from uh, uh, other people or other, other things in the society, and also the fact that you are protecting, protecting yourself or protecting your money against inflation by putting it into an investment that can at least give you the rate of inflation. So if you had $100 today, in a year from now you have $102 and the inflation is 2%, you know that you have kept with the rate of inflation and you have, your $100 has not decreased in value. The second objective is income. So a lot of people would like to invest to earn an income. So perhaps you, want, you have saved up a couple hundred thousand dollars and you would like to invest in different types of investments. Uh, it may be even a real estate investment and then you can obviously earn an income from it. This income, uh, you, it may, you may need it to uh, supplement your other incomes or it may be your only income depending on the situation. The third objective is obviously growth of capital. So growth of capital is uh, something which is obvious that you would invest money in to investments uh, or different assets and you would hope to gain, uh, you would hope for them to gain in value over time. Uh, this is usually the main objective uh, for young people because that's when you have a lot of time in front of you and you can take risks and uh, you can obviously uh, try to grow your capital. When I mean young, I mean under the age of 30, 35, because that's when you actually have money uh, left over uh, after your expenses are, are met to invest. Uh, as a teenager, you know, it's hardly the fact that you may have a lot of money. You may have money, but you have no expenses as well, right? So that means that, you know, some of that money is putting into growth of capital. 
Uh, income is for really uh, those people who are relying on the, uh, the investment to generate them some income. So it can be senior citizens, for example, people who are retired, people who are unemployed, or people without other jobs or uh, jobs that do not pay them as much as they would like. Uh, safety of capital can be applied for everyone. Uh, it can be applied for new investors. It can be applied for uh, senior people who are afraid of uh, taking a lot of risks. It can also be applied you know, in the, in the, uh, for everyone at the time of recession when they are looking at safeguarding their money. Secondary objectives are, as the word implies, secondary in nature. So they can be liquidity or tax minimization. Liquidity implies how quickly you can convert your assets into cash. It implies how quickly you can convert your assets into cash. So if you were to invest into a, a real estate asset, it will take you some time to sell it and convert it into cash. Uh, some time meaning a few days, a few weeks, it can even take you months. However, if you have your money invested in a stock or mutual funds, it can take you less than an hour to sell and uh, have your investment translated into cash. Uh, tax minimization. Some investments, as we'll go through uh, this, uh, these, uh, this unit and maybe next unit, you'll find that some investments um, have less tax implications than others. So if you are already earning a huge amount of money, you would rather invest, given a choice, you would rather invest into uh, an asset that gives you, uh, that you have to pay less tax on uh, than the other way around. So these are primary and secondary objectives. They are critical to understanding investments uh, and uh, they would help you in understanding why anyone or any company would invest. Um, there are, of course, some constraints that are applicable in this case, um, and why you know uh, where they come from is, uh, as you can see, uh, the first constraint is legal. So first of all, you must be at the age, at least the age of uh, 18, for you to uh, start investing. So that's a constraint for a lot of people. Uh, you also must be of sound mind and can make your own decisions. Otherwise, someone else with the power of attorney would have to make your decisions. Uh, moral and ethical. Some people believe uh, that uh, investments should be moral or should be morally placed, meaning they're not going to invest in companies that um, you know, have, for example, child labor uh, being employed in different parts of the world. So it is a, an, an individual constraint that they put on themselves uh, and they say that you know investments must be moral in any way that they invest. Some, some people would like to uh, invest uh, without prior knowledge or without understanding the concept of risk and return, and that is an emotional constraint, uh, because at, the, at that point they feel that they can invest and earn money. With investments comes uh, risk, and with risk you can either get make money or you can lose money, so you have to understand that. And some people do not correlate the two. So it, it, emotional constraints are part of that too. Basic minimum income to be provided by the investments. These are again, this is an, again an individual constraint. Some people feel that you know investments should give them 5% every year. So that can become a basic minimum constraint that they put on themselves and realism. And understanding that some objectives are unrealistic. For example, high returns with low risk. A lot of people will come to me and come to, come to you in the future as well. They'll say, well, you've studied finance, you've studied accounting. Tell us something, some investments that you can make lots of money on uh, without taking any risk. And it's kind of uh, hard to say, uh, to answer them, because with higher risk comes higher return. So uh, the whole point here is higher risk equal, uh, gives, uh, gives you potentially higher return or higher reward. So these are investment object uh, constraints that we have just talked about. Um, I will stop our discussion here and we'll move on to the next topic tomorrow. Hopefully you've understood investment objectives and investment constraints in detail. Thank you very much.